Hello and welcome back to the 90 plus 2 podcast. I am today's your host for today, Xander Turnbull. I'm joined by my co-host as usual, Jamie Townsend. Hello. And today we have a special guest on, MMA extraordinaire and Plymouth Parkway enjoyer, Alex Haynes. Good afternoon, thanks for having me. That's all right. Uh, so let's start off today with, obviously the Premier League came back this weekend. Jamie, what are your thoughts on the results? Um, well, a very tight weekend of games, I think. Um, obviously, nobody was really expecting much from Burnley to start the weekend, were they? Um, obviously, City, absolute battering there. Um, and just start as they mean to go on, I reckon. Alex, your thoughts? Yeah, I was, well, what stood out for me was, oh, I was happy to... Happy to see Arsenal um, get a win, but um, yeah, on the opening day, that um, Haaland's second goal, I just keep replaying that and watching that goal. It was a stunning finish. I'd say one thing that stood out to me, and I didn't really see it coming, was Newcastle against Villa. Like oh, that yeah. was incredible. I didn't expect them to win five one at all. Like that was incredible. Yeah, well, Newcastle. A lot of people thought they were going to struggle this year, um, but they've really thrown down um, their intent for the year, haven't they? Like, yeah. Definitely for sure. I think um, <clears throat> obviously Tenali scoring on his debut, yeah, uh, massive for him. Um, Harvey Barnes as well scoring on his debut, decent. Callum Wilson, Alexander Isak, Isak sort of looks good. Yeah, picking up where they left off, very good as well. Um, Chelsea versus Liverpool, that was as we expected. Yeah, I think draw. everybody expected that to be a draw. To be yeah. honest, yeah, two would. people are going to be fighting for the top four. They always draw every game. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. I thought um, Salah was looking good in the first half, but then trailed off and then was obviously taken off. Yeah, was absolutely fuming, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw, of, sorry, sorry. Well, there you go. I was going to say, what do you make of Fernandez? Fernandez, Enzo. Yeah. Decent. He is a good midfielder. I think. I think, I think he um, definitely is going to be much stronger this year. Obviously, he only had half a season, didn't he? Yeah. So, I think as well, Poch is being like known for bringing up young players. Obviously, he had like Harry Kane when he was a lot younger. He's Argentinian himself, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. So. Deli Ali, um, like Christian Eriksen, Song yeah. Min. So I think he should be all right. I think as well. Another thing, just like the promoted teams, obviously we spoke on Burnley, but Sheffield United and Luton. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knew Luton was going to struggle. I think that was a bit, what was it, 4-1 in the Four end. 4-1, yeah. Yeah, yeah. E everybody expected that, really. Mm. I Like I said, like I've been saying, they haven't signed a single Premier League quality player, I don't think. They've just been signing players as if they're making like a championship super team for next year. Mm. And if they can do it, Argyle can do it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm trying to hear. Um, and finally, just... Last thing on the Premier League, Tottenham obviously starting life without Harry Kane. Uh, started well, but then went 2-1 down, but then managed to get another one back. Just it's very Spursy, time. isn't it? Yeah. Very Spursy. Like, <laughs> it's just typical. They, I don't think they're going to like be fighting for top four by any means. No, not a chance. So I think two all against Brentford, they'll probably look back on that thinking that it's a good result, considering they'll probably be the people that they're potentially fighting with for like, Seventh, eighth. Yeah, so. I was going to say they'll be lucky to get like top six, wouldn't they? Exactly. Yeah, I saw somewhere that potentially Kyogo from Celtic could be joining Tottenham. That's so random. Well, that, well, that would, I mean, obviously, be I mean, it's a good, with Ange, it's a good backup, but, but he's not going to start, is he? No, he's not going like, to start. Like. He's a good player, but he, he's just torn up the Scottish leagues. It's just a bunch of farmers up there, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah, you can't compare, can you? No, exactly. I was going to say, um, with the Premier League, of course, the United Wolves game as well last oh, night. Oh, that was... Um, I don't know why you came away with three points. No, no not, not, a, not a single clue. I watched it with my mate Ben. Shout out, Ben, if you're listening to this Wolves fan. Oh, you poor soul. Like, absolutely, absolutely robbed. Because, like, what? The, it was definitely, definitely a pen, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. He clattered the kid, didn't he? Exactly. <laughs> like, Wolves all game on top. Had so many good chances. I think Cunha looks like he's going to be a really good signing. Mm. Yeah, like, obviously. Sure. He, Again, one of those players, a bit like Enzo, who is, is taking him a bit of time to gel. But he's he looked really good last night, making a lot of chances. And if he can get fire in, that will probably be one of the things that could potentially keep him up because it looks like they will be in a relegation dogfight, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair to say. I do feel sorry for him, though, after last night. That is very rough. Because like, if, if it <laughs> comes down to like a point or two at the end of the season... They'll yeah, definitely feel like... Didn't Isaac say if it came down to goal difference? At yeah, the end, exactly. It'll be brutal. Yeah, they'll be looking back on that one. And, and did you see that the referees who... The, like, the officiating team from last night has been banned from officiating next weekend already. Yeah, oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've already said that they made such a mistake in that game oh. that it's like they've banned them from 
I mean, I, f- I find it fine. Like, obviously, that's the Premier League. It's meant to be the top tier. Uh, yeah. But the refereeing standard is so poor. Yeah. Well, it is in the entire of the EFL, really, isn't it? Yeah, like, You true. see it. We've, we've seen it every week with Argyle for years now, like in the lower leagues. You think when you get to the championship, it's going to get better, or even in the it, Prem. It does. It gets worse. And even with VAR, they're still making mistakes. It's mm. like... Yeah, all, all over the football league. Even in non-league, I see it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I can, well. like, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine it really. even worse. You can get away yeah. with any old yeah, oh, God. crap there, can't non, you? Non-league refs, even down at my level it's, it's actually <laughs> appalling like we like the other day well they don't get paid enough to try do they no, like the other day we had some guy who was trying to go up to the next level uh, jesus christ he could hardly do my level <laughs> come on mate but um moving on to the championship obviously starting with Argyle. Yeah. Are we all of amazing guy, point amazing, result, amazing so result i was there uh, good i uh, like the best no no i've ever seen honestly like the yes. atmosphere was great from the 2000 away Argyle fans there was like 19,000 fans there and the Watford boys made absolutely no noise, I must say. Considering they're ex-Prem and yeah. like will be fighting for promotion slash playoffs, I reckon it's pretty poor. But yeah, Argyle, really good account of themselves there. Really strong defensively. Scar and Gibson were my men of the match. I was going to bring them up. Yeah, I, they I, were I, was, I didn't see the game, but I heard a lot about them. They were so this. good. Like the blocks and stuff, like just throwing themselves in front of the ball. Yeah. Connor Hazard looks solid as well. Yeah, he looks really good. Really, really, he's really good replacement for Cooper, I think. Yeah. It's nice to have a really good tall keeper as well. Yeah, I'd say that's one thing that kind of makes him, like has kind of helped him, especially in the Huddersfield game when he yeah. made the few mistakes. The fact he's so big, he could just cover so much ground like without really doing much. Oh yeah, I will say um, after the Huddersfield game, there were people talking about his distribution. It looks like it's already improved just over the course of a week. Like he definitely oh, yeah. looked like his distribution was. I mean, you watched the game as well, didn't you? Yeah. So it's like, like seeing it like def- definitely compared to last week and this week, it's improved so much. Well, his confidence is only going to grow the more he yeah, plays, yeah. isn't it? I say so. confidence is growing. He's obviously been working on it as well. It's something that he needed to kind of focus on yeah i think he's one of those keepers as well where you can tell already it looks like scar and gibson definitely trust him like they they already oh, yeah. seem to have a trust in him like with they're, they're not afraid to just back off and let shots be taken at him because he made a few good stops in that game mm-hmm. i will say with the wing backs i've seen a really mixed bag the yeah. people around me at the game were slaughtering early in edwards the whole game but then out on Twitter, I've seen people saying that they thought Saxonelli was man of the match. Yeah, I've heard that as well. So it's yeah. like, it's a really mixed bag of what people thought. I mean, I'll say, I thought he looked really good last year when he signed from Stevenage. What, what was he from Villa? He, he was, I thought he was from Norwich. Wasn't he? he was from Norwich. Norwich, Norwich yeah, that's Norwich, it. Yeah. Uh, it. Sorry, it was um, the other two were from Villa, weren't they? Kesla Hayden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well. Hayden. Um, and yeah, right and well. I'll say, I saw him... I don't know if it was his debut against Oxford and he scored in the game and I was like, oh, this kid's going to be good. And then obviously he was thrown into the deep end. He did look a little bit out of his depth, but I, I wouldn't like slaughter him as much as some people have been. No. I feel like it, like he's just got to get experience, hasn't he? Like he's never played at that level before. So Yeah, exactly. I think it, it might have just been down to down to some nerves. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, give, give him a chance. I mean, it's good to stay positive about these kind of things. And like, I think you got to look at the fans that are giving him a good review. Yeah. Um, they're probably the more accurate side of it. They're trying to stay positive. And yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. He does instead of, you know, being negative. Well, on I don't the think there's guy. any need to come out and slaughter him. Or no, no. No, because that's just gonna, it's not exactly. going to help. It's not going to help, is it? I, I mean, saw um, Joe Edwards as well. He was, I probably think yeah. he was more, I'd say he kind of, I wouldn't say he was out of his depth, but he looked shaky. And I think it's probably, I think it's just, oh, it's, it's, his, get, it's his age as well. He's just getting age. skinned, isn't he? Yeah. Oh like boy. Mateus Martins, he had him, Yep. on toast like I think I remember I remember. Hearing I think we all expected this we all said this at the oh, end of yeah. last season we were like we'll give him a chance considering he's captain but realistically it was like he's gonna need somebody to be at least to come on for him someone like Mikel Miller yeah. or oh, I would yeah. even consider starting the game with Miller for the pace and then just bringing on Edwards to show yeah. it up at the end yeah, I'd like yeah. that. I'd like that's to see what that. I would suggest I'd like, like to see that on the weekend, for example, who, so it's Southampton isn't it yeah I would say if, if Hayden's fit start him on the left Get Miller on the right. Stay with the same two in the middle. Randall is another one I was going to mention. I love Randall. Don't be wrong. And I was thinking he was one of our best players at the end of last season, obviously, before he got injured, didn't he, before yeah. Wembley. Yeah. He looked a bit out of his depth so far. So I would consider starting Luke Cundall, the new guy, because he's looked solid He against Orion and then again at Watford um, alongside potentially you'd, you'd keep Houghton in for that stability, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because he's just consistent. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. week, um, and who's who's the other centre who's been start? Has it been Callum Wright? It's yeah, it's been Callum Wright again. He's looked a little bit shaky, so we we'll yeah. potentially bring in Butcher 
or I'm not sure I'd start as Zaz, to be honest, but then keep the same front three, maybe switch out. I, I would give Wayne a start, honestly, mm. over Hardy. I love Hardy as well, and 50 goals is telling. Mm. But he, again, he looked a little bit lazy at Watford, I thought. Yeah, I, I think don't know what you thought from that. Well, I always, I've sort of, no, like, no offence to Ryan Hyde, but I feel that's just like his sort of persona on the pitch where he just always looks like he's not trying he always looks like he's not trying but then he'll just out, come out of nowhere and like make like some darting run obviously like he did against um Watford sort of really yeah. test tested the goalkeeper and I think as well Rand with Randall and Wright I think Randall maybe on maybe like going forward a bit but when going forward he looks a bit shaky but defensively he made some really good blocks yeah I agree when they were trying to get balls into the box or shots which I think Callum Wright didn't do like Callum Wright on occasion he I would definitely be more inclined to start Randall over Wright yeah yeah me too just I for think. the defensive side I think if Houghton wasn't starting I especially think against Southampton because oh, you yeah. know it's just gonna be an onslaught all game it is yeah it's just so gonna be that's going to be it's going to be, be chasing. That's the case for a lot of games this season. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> we all probably lured into a bit of a false sense of security after the yeah. Well, it's it's been such a great start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to be fair, I'll give them credit. I was expecting them to ship like three or four going away to Watford. I was fully expecting oh, yeah, to same. be going up there and well, just. I was going to say I was listening to um, the, your your last podcast. Yeah, and you were talking about it, and I, I heard Sandinho's. Prediction it was like four, <laughs> four nil Watford or something yeah. like that. So nil nil yeah, is it, like not to be underestimated how incredible of a result that is considering yeah. Oh, yeah. they scored like five against QPR, didn't they? Yeah, they scored four against QPR. Like even Charlie Charlie Price, yeah. he was he wasn't optimistic for it. And like Yeah. Like, so that and that's someone who works for Argyle. So, you know, it's yeah. It's the way things go, but yeah. But so it's about like um you know, trying to turn those games into wins at some yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. We, we yeah. can't be we can't come away. Uh, obviously, it's a great start, but we can't come away from every draw like that, thinking like, oh, you know, we're chuffed with that result. We got, we got to figure out a way of turning those games into wins if we're going to survive. Well, yeah, because even then, like looking up the table, really, like I think there's some teams who have already looked a lot poorer than I thought they would. Yeah, I obviously, think Middlesbrough dead bottom. Yeah, mm. but, I mean, it's Middlesbrough and Sunderland, mad. they've yeah. had such a poor start. It's mad. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Anything could happen this year with Argyle. Could, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing that I've always loved about Argyle, especially in last year as well. We're always an unknown. Mm -hmm. Like Nobody's predicting us to do well. Nobody predicted us to do well last year. We haven't had the most money. We haven't had the best players. Nobody knows where this could end. We could be in a dogfight all year, or we could be pushing up to well, it's like mid-table. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you never know. And I think... Anywhere above twenty first place, I'd be very happy yeah, with. As long I as we stay in, stay in the league. Exactly. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Um, most people have written us off already, haven't they? And, and uh, they do every year, don't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. And I, I kind of enjoy being the underdog. So yeah, exactly. Proving people wrong because we do that time and time and time again. Uh, look at last season. Like, yeah. No one expected that, did they? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, right as well, Ipswich. They've had a. Good, a good start. An annoyingly good start. An annoyingly good start. But I think as well, I think before people get too excited. How much money have they spent? Like One, exactly. they, one they spent that, but also two, they've got to look at who they've played against so far. They beat a 10-man Sunderland who are like lacking a real striker. But that is a great result. That though. is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that is a great result. Go acknowledge that. Go yeah. acknowledge that. But like, that I, I, don't get me wrong, can't stand it, Switch, but that is a really <laughs> good result considering I, I've predicted Sunderland to be in the playoffs. And then they come up against Stoke. Now, while Stoke have had a good... Again, a lot of people have predicted Stoke to do well, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, admittedly, they beat Rotherham 4-0 opening day, but that's Rotherham. Yeah. That to remember. There, but they? also Stoke as well, they are like the most unpredictable team because every year everyone's like, oh, Stoke are going to do this, Stoke are going to do that. And then they end up like 14th, 15th. Yeah, I think they'll be mid-table. But yeah, annoyingly good start from Ipswich. I know. Actually. A lot of people being like, oh, McKenna's the best English manager, young English manager. I'm like, he didn't win the league last year, though, did no, he? No, he didn't. Exactly. Like, <laughs> my mate Stephen will not be happy. I think it's, it's annoying that it gets more clicks, though, doesn't it? People, if they're oh, if yeah. they're it's going to, though, They're going to talk about Ipswich and their manager a, a lot more than little old Argyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's, that's what we're saying. We don't need the media attention. We'll just keep proving people wrong. Yeah. And Leeds struggled so far as well. That was... I'm don't quite surprised about that. I don't mind it, but I'm quite surprised. 
Yeah, well, fine um, by me. My mate Ellis Lake will not be happy. <laughs> well, they're losing all their players, aren't they? As well, yeah. Adams looks like he's definitely going to be off, whether it's Everton or Chelsea or wherever. I think he's going. Uh, Chelsea was off, but he could be going to Bournemouth. And then Daniel Farker's interview were, um, it was so funny. He was asked about three different players, and every single time, just went, "I don't speak about that. I don't speak <laughs> about that." Where he was like, "Can you explain why Sinistera wasn't in the team this week?" Oh, I don't speak about that. Mm. I speak about the game. <laughs> it's like Sinistera, Nonto, Adams. Mm. They're all, they all could be off. Yeah. Daniel right. Farker, though, he's a guy, he looks quite a scary bloke, but he's got uh, the voice of an angel. He's got otherwise. the softest voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got the softest voice in the EFL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but it's, not, it's not a good sign, is it, when he's uh, no. refusing to talk about it? Yeah, exactly. Like, just own up to it. Yeah. And then, wait, one thing I'll say as well, we didn't mention with um, the, the transfer saga with Caicedo. Oh, God. Was it 115 mil he's gone to Chelsea for or something? Yeah. It's getting crazy. <laughs> Liverpool taking such an L there. They've taken two as well. Lavia. Yeah, Lavia. Yeah, they'd mm-hmm. agreed. Like I think it was sixty million for Lavia, and now and he's like, now nah, I want to play for Chelsea. Yeah, <laughs> don't blame him. Nah, you can't blame <laughs> him. <laughs> they've got. They've just bought the entire. Just, surely there must be some kind of financial fair play. They were, Chelsea they were, well, yeah, well, to be fair, they've spent so much money. It's sketchy actually, goings on. Here. Actually, that is funny. That because I saw something yesterday about like how much um, Chelsea have spent compared to other leagues in the world oh yeah um so, yeah so chelsea chelsea comp- on their own there's a top 10 right chelsea are fifth they're above in terms of spending they're above la liga and uh, portuguese <laughs> premier league that's so funny. eredivisie the championship and the fact that they've spent more than the entire la liga I'm guessing the japanese pro league i think incredible i don't know what that, yeah. so who's who's above chelsea then um the bundesliga league uh Serie A, and the premier league yeah well they're included in the premier league one mm. yeah but so. 934 million euros. That's, that's how much, Chelsea. That's Chelsea. <sighs> Money spent on transfer fees versus Europe's top leagues. That's crazy. Mm. That is so crazy. It's just sports washing, isn't it? Like, yeah. 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 Exactly. Straight up. <laughs> Don't get that down in Parkway, do you? No, not right. at all, mate. We're still, we're still <laughs> biggest still transfer. see some quality down there, though. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> free. Just is it all to, free transfers, I'd assume? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's yeah. the best way. That's what Argo did for years, isn't it? It's um, much better. And then more real. Moving on to the mighty swans. Oh, here moving we on go. To them. Yeah. Well, oh, no, there's there's no rants. No rants today. No rants today. What have you got to talk about the fact that you lost to West Brom? Oh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, like I'm okay with it. Was it three? It was three two. Three two. You we were three nil down. Three nil down. We're absolutely awful. First part of the game. Absolutely awful. <laughs> but um, the way I think the way we came back into it shows that there is something there and we're going to get to that stage but i just think we're starting too slowly and i heard duff say in his um post-match interview that we were keep keeping the ball for the sake of it yeah which sort of shows we've still got the old russell martin habits and we need to like get rid of them obviously but um i was th- and like people are like calling for him to be sacked after two games really? i mean they were calling him to be sacked when he didn't clap fans in a preseason friendly so why People are so fickle. I yeah. know. Yeah, but, it's harsh. But then you, I looked at like Michael Duff's um, like managerial career so far. Yeah. And he went, his first eight games winless with Cheltenham Town back in 2018. And then they dropped into the relegation zone. And then after that, they won, they only lost one of their next nine games. And then he ended up taking them to 16th. I was going to say, I remember him being up. solid there. Yeah. Then he got them into the playoffs the next season. And then the following season during the like the lockdown season, he got them to League Two champions. Then the next year, 15th place in League One with Cheltenham yeah. when they're most likely tipped to go down. Yeah, exactly. Then last season with Barnsley, he ba- lost... Barnsley. Ba- Barnsley. He lost three of his opening five games. And after 15 games, they were sat ninth in the league, probably like one of the favourites to go up as well, Barnsley, just after coming down. Yeah. And then... After their tough start, they went on to win 16 of the next 21 league games. Yeah, again. Mm-hmm. So you can he's got s- a run in him, clearly. He's got a run in him. So you can see that it just clicks. It might take up like 10 to 15 games, but it does eventually get there. And then yeah. they ended the season with a fourth mo- in fourth, with the fourth most goals and the joint and the joint fifth best defensive record in the league, joint with Argyle and Lincoln. There you go. So it, it can give him get time. better. Give, give him, time. him time. Like they gave Russell Martin time. Everyone was like, trust the process. All this, blah, blah, blah. Well, fucking trust Michael Duffy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor boy. Yeah. And then, what, well, you, you signed Charlie Patino. Charlie uh, Patino. Last episode, I love you? that signing. Honestly, it's, that is amazing signing. I think he's a really good signing. Yeah. yeah. Got an assist on his debut as well. So okay. Nice. Proved himself. And Tri- I think terrific little player. as well, the players we've brought in, we've brought in like Harrison Ashby from Newcastle. That's 
I'd say that's a good signing. Carl Rushworth. He was amazing at Lincoln last year on loan. Yeah. Um, Charlie Bettino. We got some guy in from some Eredivisie side. I think it was Excelsior or something like that. He's called um, Nathan Chuaton. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember you mentioning that. Then we're also looking at some guy from Chelsea. I can't remember his name, but only on loan. But he's just another centre-back. But I think if you look at the team, it's a strong team. Yeah. So it's just about giving it time and then eventually just hopefully it just comes together. Yeah. As was long as you beat Cardiff twice again. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, to be honest, if we don't beat them twice... Yeah, it should, like, be, should be pissing them this year. Yeah. But... Um, How did you get on in the first game? First game. Uh, drew 1-1 one, one with Birmingham. Which I'd say is also fair and respectable because they Solid. look good. They look good. Solid. Yeah, it's not be easy when I've got to go there in a few weeks. No. No. No, I'm glad you boys can speak about Swansea because when it comes to Swansea, I've got zero born. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about Swansea. I just... <laughs> it just all radiates off him. Yeah. I just radiate it all off him. <laughs> Argyle striker. That's yeah. a big one. Josh Coburn is the one that I want now. Apparently, we did actually submit a loan move for him. Yeah. Um, but it fell through. So we're going to be putting another one in. And I really hope it comes through because I think he is an absolutely great player. Mm. He was on loan last year, wasn't he? Yeah, Bristol Rovers, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, he mate, good. he's yeah. class. He's class. He scored against Tottenham in the FA Cup as well. Exactly. Mm, I'd love to see it. I wanted to see, um, what's he called? Aaron Collins. Aaron, was, Aaron Collins, yeah. Pay, pay some money for Aaron Collins from Bristol Rovers, yeah, but if we can't get him... We've been linked with Aaron Collins as well. So. Yeah, well, I think everybody has. It's like everybody was linked with Macaulay Langstaff from Notts oh, County. God, yeah. And he's hmm. still there. Exactly. They're struggling, by yeah, the way. They, they are. Wrexham as well, I'd say. Yeah-ish. I mean, 1-1 one, one draw with Wimbledon. Solid. Solid. Saved the pen, didn't they? Yeah. So... I think with Wrexham, it's one of those things where everybody just had such high hopes because they did so well in the National League. And I think no, nobody really knew how they were going to be able to like handle the transition. Mm. And so, again, I don't think it's a bad start. A loss, considering they lost to MK Dons, yeah. they've yeah. just come down and still have like Moe, Sir, and a lot of other good players. It's like. And it's still so early, isn't it? Yeah, I don't they think might it's a bad start. Feet. Same with Notts County as well. Just, I don't think it's anything to be worried about. Yeah. Who, who's the team is currently top of the league to? I, no. I don't know, but I saw that. Um, okay. that actually, League Two. Oh, League Two. I think it is MK Dons, actually. Yeah, I again. think it is. See, I didn't actually predict them to go up, mainly because I kind of just forgot about them yeah. when we were doing our they predictions. Are forget, they are forgettable. Well, just because like, I just thought it would be one of those where they could just slip away for a bit. Uh, yeah, so it's MK Dons, Barrow and Gillingham. Yeah, so Gillingham, unsurprisingly. Gillingham, yeah. We, yeah, well, I they, think they went down, didn't they? Uh, well, a no. lot of people predicted them to do quite well because um, they got a bit of investment, I think, didn't they? Yeah, they got, um, I don't know what investment, but they, I think loads of people were like saying, oh, Gillingham are going to do well, Gillingham do well. And I think that like, they have the squad to yeah. as well. Mm. Obviously, last year they just struggled a bit, just I think probably because... Gillingham away, the famous away day stand, which is completely uncovered yeah. behind the goal. Glad we don't have to go there anymore. Then, like, obviously, League One as well. Cambridge and Stevenage having... Really good starts. Yeah. Um, Stevenage shocked me. I'll, I'll, I predicted them to finish dead last. I think I predicted them to finish go down as well. But, yeah. um, Bol- Bol- Bolton doesn't surprise me. No. Like I said, I um, think they'll, they all do obviously brilliantly this year. Yeah, they'll Barnsley they'll as well. Of, well, they won their first game 7-0 against Port Vale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, pretty, uh, pretty damning, yeah. 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 Reading have struggled so far. Doesn't yeah. surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. Because I, I always saw that they would struggle in the transition down. Hmm. Wigan as well, two wins, but still bottom of the league. Yeah. Wickham, I'm I'm kind of surprised about that in a in a way. Yeah, I don't know. They'll find their feet. I think they will. Yeah, they they always kind of challenge for playoff places. Don't yeah, they? exactly. They're always there or thereabouts. Exactly. I mean, I Chel- Cheltenham be. being down there doesn't surprise me. I mean, losing Alfie May, uh, like that's you're gonna Burton, go. Northampton. Yeah, they're all they're all pretty much down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then so what is the um what else is there in the championship? Championship. Uh, so, who, so is it um. South, no, who's who's top so far? Is it Leicester? It, no, it's Ipswich. Ipswich are top. Of the oh, league. yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then cool. then it's Leicester. Leicester. Then I'll go in fourth, you know. Oh, <laughs> say it yeah, quietly, say it quietly. It looks good right now, don't it? It looks good. <laughs> Norwich and Southampton, 4 4. Yeah. What a game that was. That was a great mm. game. That was a really good game. So uh, I'm saying, I think we're going to ship a few against them. I know yeah. they've lost Ward Prowse since the last game. Great signing for West Ham. By oh, way. yeah. I'm oh, just so looking forward to this season, though. It's, it's, Championship can be completely oh, chaos. So good. Uh, well, it's like it's mad yeah. to think that we've got leads away and stuff to come mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Like, like that's just 
I know we've been there in the past. Like, obviously, when you would have been going, when it was in the championship, there was big teams down there. But, yeah. like, it's been so... Uh, exactly. It's been such so a long, long. Yeah, it's been such a long time. It's nice to see 13 years. Yeah. Like, what else? So, what's your next... Next thing, I was just going to speak to Alex. But, obviously, you were around last time Argyle got promoted to the championship. What, what are your memories of that? Uh, I, re- I just remember just being... I would always go with my dad and I just remember you know, so many good memories of, get, of getting promoted. It's, it was just such a good time to be an Argyle fan and it is again, it's just great to see. Um, you know, it's, you never know with us, but um, yeah, it was just great memories and it's good to see again, really. Well, it's something that's so important for the whole city, isn't it? Yeah, like I've seen yeah. so many people now wearing Argyle shirts around the city again. It's just so nice yeah. to see like yeah. young kids and even adults and stuff like there's, there was like the period, obviously, when we were like <laughs> so low down in the football league, like on the verge of like falling out of it. It's, it's lovely to see. And it is definitely one of those things with football where it, it brings it back for the whole city, doesn't it? Yeah. Like you, you just get a more positive vibe. I know after we got promoted, you walk around any corner in the city, there were people singing Argar chants and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just... And even, Lovely. And even like people in the street, like, you know, when you had like, uh, what was, I think it was the Port Vale game when you had your Argyle Christmas jumper on. Oh, and everyone yeah. just, you just walk past someone and go, <laughs> Green Army! Yeah, loves it. I mean, like, I feel like people, even if they're not Argyle fans necessarily down here, like they say they support like Arsenal or Chelsea or something like that, I feel like it's probably even brought them, like, Argyle fans out the woodwork, I think. Well, I think, a lot, yeah, a lot yeah, of people. Start, they'll start coming to games more as well. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people down here will have a second team. Oh, yeah. Obviously, like, True. I, I do for United. My brothers are Arsenal, obviously, like, Dan's Liverpool and stuff. So it's like, it's just, have you ever had a second team necessarily a Premier yeah, team yeah I've got a soft spot for Arsenal yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I like support them or anything but no, I, I like to it's see it's one of those isn't well, it because yeah. we've always been so far away yeah. from them really yeah. it's mad yeah. to think that and there could be people who are like Leeds yeah. like fans who are now have to see Argonne and Leeds yeah. in the same league well like for, for me Swansea, like, Swansea yeah. and Argonne in the same league like obviously one day I thought oh it could probably happen but yeah. I didn't maybe imagine it so, so not, soon. not this soon no not well, this soon no. you think we got um as soon as 2019, we were in League Two. We only yeah. got promoted during COVID under he who shall not be named Mr. Low. Um, that's coming up soon. Preston away. I know. Oh, yeah, it's going to be funny. mad. No, all, I can't wait for that. that. Yeah, can't wait for that. <laughs> That'll be a tough game as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, they've they've had a decent start. Preston. Yeah, they have, yeah. I, I think um, they'll be around mid-table pushing for playoffs again. I hate to say it, but yeah, they've just, just got the players, haven't they? Yeah. The, you, you get the pull when you're up that way, don't you? Like, it's what we've always said about our down here, the like the catchment area. It's always really hard to attract good players. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. always hard to attract good players, and it's always hard to um, attract goal scorers as well. Yeah, like definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been good. It's been, it's been such a good ride. That's why I couldn't believe that Whitaker and Mumba came back. To be honest, yeah, yeah. Mumba especially. I think like one thing maybe for Morgan like. I don't know, maybe just like sort of a comparison in a way between obviously Argyle and Swansea, like the fans, yeah. they love the players like a, like a lot, like you get so much love from the fans. So I think in a way sort of like maybe Morgan not quite getting to experience that at Swansea because obviously coming in during the COVID season and that and not really play much under Russell Martin, I think having that sort of love from the fans. Well, I think it was the way that it ended with Morgan as well, just yeah. being recalled. He clearly didn't want to go back. Oh, no. And when he first went back... Ref- like literally refused to play. Yeah. Couldn't find his feet there again. So that, that move always seemed like it was inevitable really. Cause he loved it down here. And obviously yeah. he's moved down here with his girlfriend and his dog. Yeah. Um, but Apparently they're in the same house as they were before. Yeah. It doesn't shock me. They probably had it waiting for him to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Simon Hallett's bought the house out. Of him. <laughs> I would. But Bali, like I said, Bali was the one that really shocked me. Cause it looked like he was playing in Norwich's preseason games, yeah. playing well, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, just came out don't get me wrong, I am not, <laughs> I do not mind at all, but that was a mad week when we signed them both for a million yeah. pound each. Yeah, it's strange that Norwich were willing to let him go like that. But yeah, for a, only for a million pound, honestly. Mm. And Whitaker as well, they were wanting two and a half mil for him in January, weren't they? Th- more, like three million. Exactly. Three million. It's but, mad. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, their loss is our game for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I just hope that we can establish ourselves as, uh, you know, a strong championship side over the years because uh, I think it was about six year stint last time we were there yeah um but yeah i hope we can do the same again and well, that was always the plan i think it was when when hallett like became the majority owner and with Jews nip and then when they brought in low 
they had like the five year plan from League Two to become a sustainable championship club. Mm. And it, it's literally almost there now. It could be possible. Yeah. And I think as well, like with Argyle, like you said about struggle to attracting players, I feel like obviously Swansea have that as well. Because I think Cart, you've oh, got. In the middle of fucking nowhere. Isn't yeah. It? But also in between. Like and going into Wales and getting to Swansea, you've got Cardiff. Exactly. Like Cardiff is it's a big city, it's a lovely city. Like yeah. you you know, you've been. I love Cardiff. I like I love going to Cardiff as it's well. It's just because it's quite similar to Plymouth, really. It, it has like a it's like a nicer yeah, it's feel. A, it's like a really I don't know what it is. I just always feel like lovely for a capital city. Anyway, yeah. let's stop sucking off Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was just saying is I like, know exactly what you mean though. Like the Cardiff's a lovely place, so it attracts the players. Yeah. And also, it's easier for people to get like their families to come there. Yep. Whereas Swansea, exactly. it's like... Yeah, you've got like an extra hour. Yeah, and also you have to get through Swansea to get to the nicer bit as well. Not, yeah. not that Swansea's bad. There is some good bits, but... It's a shit hole, isn't it? The, 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 high, the high street, you know. It is a shit hole. Yeah, no. <laughs> like it is. <laughs> we don't need to yeah. beat around the bush. Yeah, it's but good, good and bad points for every city in there. So yeah, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Stonehouse. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but moving on from that, Alex, you... Do work at Parkway, do a bit of Parkway. Yes. You, enjoy, you enjoying that? Yeah, I'm loving it. It's a great experience. Um, doing a bit of everything, really. Uh, writing match previews. Uh, look film. good, mate. I would say I've, I've read quite a lot of your stuff. It looks really good, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really enjoy it, especially the writing side. So it's good to get involved with the with the programme this season. Nice. Um, I interview Captain Ryan Lane uh, before every home game for the programme. Nice. Uh, ask him a few questions, and that goes in there as well. I film the matches. Um and this season, I am going to be getting my hands dirty when it comes to the editing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be trying to edit the footage and putting together the highlights package. At the moment, it's the, the main guy that's doing that is Mike, um, but he's uh, he's given me a, a chance to do that this season. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be good. And it's, Very um, nice. It's a good experience as well because it's you know it's uh, it's a shame that I can't get to Argyle as much, um, but. It's a commitment that I'm I'm happy to take and you know, yeah. yeah building the portfolio. Got to start somewhere, ain't you? Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I get get to know people and get to see some pretty good football. Yeah, actually, say, I've, been, I've been to Parkway a few yeah. times. Yeah. They look like a solid team. Obviously, they gave yeah. Argyle a good game this year yeah. and last yeah. year. Drew two all last year, two 0 this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has a really nice family feel at the club as well. I feel. Yeah, it's a really well run club. Yeah, um, like you say, really like a it's a really nice atmosphere. It's um really community based yeah and everyone uh, kind of you know they're committed and they do their jobs and uh, yeah all the, all the players are great as well and and the staff have been really welcoming yeah it's a great experience the ground is really good for the level as well i'll say yeah, yeah it's it's got got really nice they've three stands that, yeah. that's under the covers they've invested in that really well it, it looks great and, and they've got and they've got like a really uh, you know a, a committed home support as well you know, yeah they're, they're mm. a loyal fan base that turn out every week and it's, it's good to see so ground share with Truro don't they that's right we're in the National yeah. League South yeah. only a le- only a league off the National League South I know Parkway I know. Is, it's absolutely mad and, 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 and last season Parkway really showed that they could compete with the best teams in the league in, including Truro so, yeah um, you never know you know in a few years time you never know Keep yeah. going, keep going. <laughs> Could be in the track. National yeah. League. Yeah. Yeah. Although the yeah. Like you've even got... Um, Make it into the leagues. Mm-hmm. Former ex- Ben Seymour. Is he still ben there? Ben Seymour left. Oh, he left. Yeah. Oh, ben. I can't remember where he went, but he, he's not there anymore. I was going to say, if he's still there, like that's quite a big player to have. Have you got mm. like a... Per- is it Perrington? Is he there? Perrington's there now, Tom Perrington. Yeah, yeah. ex Um nice. I feel like that that's probably going to be a place for quite a few. Obviously, you had... Um, who was it? It was on loan there last year from Argyle. Oh, it was um, was it Finley Crask or one of them type players. Crask was there for a bit. Yeah. Uh, Is there um, any there now who are on loan from Argyle? Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, obviously, ex Argyle Parrington, but yeah, no, no one on loan. Yet. Yeah, but it's it's good because it's it's a good place for people who like are local, brought up around the area, and don't quite make it with Argyle. Yeah. It's a good step down, challenge themselves in that yeah. league, isn't it? Like, yeah, exactly. And um, Harrison King. He went to Exeter City. Um, sorry to mention that, but <laughs> <laughs> but he's just got a pro con- tr- contract with Exeter City, and oh, he's, nice. back, he's back on loan at Parkway. So it's um, that will nice. strengthen the squad as well. It's good to see him. You can see him come back and get some minutes. Oh yeah, so you, didn't you interview? You interviewed him, didn't you? That's right. Yeah, I saw that. I'm seeing that. It was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do uh, yeah interviews at the end as well with the with the players. So that yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good experience, isn't it? Like you said, just anything. Like add to the portfolio. Yeah, exactly. It's still a, are they semi-professional side then? They are semi-pro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right now on to the quiz. Oh, all right. So yeah, this quiz no we uh, how would you say um, 
we made it just before you got here and it is based on the promotion season in 0304 okay so we will um me and Xander are alternate asking you the questions okay so what, i've got probably more knowledge on 0102 than 0304 <laughs> okay we'll see we'll see we'll see what happens okay so when they got promoted how many points did they get that season so we'll give you this within 5 within 5 uh was it uh, was it 101 oh Close. It was 90. 90. 90. Yeah. I thought it was over 100 that year. So, th- yeah, so this was the season we went up from League 1 to League 2. Oh, yeah. All right, so the next one, again, probably be a guess. How many clean sheets did they get? Oh. So is this over a 46-game f- season? Let's say 16. Ooh. Ooh. Close. It was 21. 21. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, most of this guesswork right now. Yeah. <laughs> that season, Argo did break a club record for most clean sheets in a row. So how many clean sheets mm. did they get? Uh, like I said, I wish you asked me about 0102. <laughs> <laughs> Next uh, time. Seven. Yes, Ooh, yes, spot on. I'll give you two points for that. I think I read that recently as well, so I was lucky. All right, this one sh- could be a bit easier. Who was our top goal scorer that year? Was it Frio? It was it indeed. Was. And how many did he get? Uh, I'm going to say 13. Oh. Within one, so I'll give you the point. It was, it was 14. 14. There you go. You're on a run now, mate. Who was their biggest win of the season against? And what was the score? Oh, um, I feel like it was uh, 6-1 against Peterborough. Oh, that Ooh. was the second one. It was, one? it was 7-0. Seven seven nil. Nil. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Against Chesterfield. That's the one, yeah. Oh, I I didn't, that, that is I unlucky. That was the same season, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot it was the same season. All right. Who, this one you should be able to get. Who was the highest home attendance and who was it against? Uh, if you think about the iconic s- game. Uh, were Exeter in that league then, Exeter? No, it was uh, the promotion was game it? against oh, QPR. QPR. Oh, of course it was. 19,888. That's right. That is a lot of people. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah Considering only like 17,000 can go now. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, because they used to have that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I only kind of really noticed the other day that there's actually like the steps are still there. Yeah. I've always kind of seen it, but I never really knew what was there, to be honest. But anyway, who was the captain that season? Oh, captain was, uh, was it, was it Watton? It was it indeed. Was, yeah. And Truro manager. Yeah. <laughs> so there is these this is a two parter. So who was the manager who started the season but left? And for which club did he leave to go to? So Storrock. Yes. The manager he left for Southampton. He did indeed. He did. There you go. Heartbreaking stuff. S- strong end there. And I'm pretty sure as well. He was only in charge of Southampton for about seven games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Literally. They him, they did. Oh my god, yeah. that's that's bad. Yeah, he uh, he didn't do well, but they did not give him a chance. No. This is a similar heartbreak to when um, it was Holloway he left for Blackpool, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I know. Or Leicester. I, know. I think Holloway got wise to what was going on at the club, though, with yeah, the financial exactly. situation, and he didn't want to didn't want to stick around. But I think, you know, I think <sighs> things could have been so much different. You know, we could have. There was, there was a time where we looked like we might be able to challenge for promotion. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, well, they finished um, just outside the playoffs, didn't they? Yeah. Obviously, that was a little bit. I was different. going when I was like four years old. Yeah. A very strong end there, Alex. You got a solid score of seven. Well done. Yeah, that was good. You are top of the leaderboard. Hey. We've only done this quiz twice and the other person got <laughs> six. <laughs> but you're still top. I'm top so of the that's what matters. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There you go. What have you got next for us, Xander? Right. My, the bit that everyone enjoys. Fact of oh, the is day. Is it your fact of the day? <laughs> fact of the day. Here we go, boys. So, uh, anyone who watched Burnley versus Manchester City on um, Friday night might have seen this, but... Did I, indeed. I saw this on Twitter. The cost of Manchester City's current defence, like current defenders at the club, is four hundred and twenty four million pounds. Yep. And Burnley's all time spent on transfers is only three hundred and sixty million. <laughs> all time. <laughs> all time. Yeah. That's crazy. That is mad. I mean, like I I can't even say I'm that shocked to be honest. Yeah. No, the, me neither. The current climate. It's no. <laughs> well, was that there was that one? Um, the other fact that came up that was the oh, one that was the subs and goals. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Do you know what that one is? It was Argo had the most goals from substitutes um, in the top four leagues last season, and I think it was it was either twenty three or twenty one. 
I think. Yeah. One of the like that's that's crazy. That's class, isn't it? Well, because you, you've got to think we had four strikers who were all firing last year, didn't we? Yeah. Only one of them would start the game usually. Yeah. True. And really, if you think about it as well, you technically had like five if you count Morgan as well. Yeah. For, his, Tilly. for what he did. Tilly. Fucked off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor boy. Well, he didn't fuck it off. He got. No, he, he, he got, got. He got dragged. <laughs> yeah. He got dragged. <laughs> he got dragged. <laughs> kicking and screaming, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> All right. Poor lad. But yeah. yeah. You got anything else to I think that's like to it. Add? To be honest, we've had a lot of Argyle chat, haven't we? Yeah. Very Argyle heavy pod. But that's the way. It's that's always just the way what you expect. Yeah. Did you have anything else to add, Alex? No, no, just thanks for having me on. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, mate. That's it's been right, it's so been really good, good to have you on. on. We'll um probably try and keep doing this podcast every week if we can. So we'll yeah. definitely get you on again after a lecture or something. Uh, yeah, I'd love to come back. There's any yeah. significant Parkway or Argyle happenings, which <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there will be. Well, uh, I don't know about promotion. I mean, it's been a pretty rocky start to the season. For yeah, I, saw, I yeah. saw that. They lost like 7-0, seven didn't nil they? on the opening day. <laughs> oh, so the less said about that, the better. Who are they uh, playing? They were playing Hungerford Town on the first... <laughs> Huge club. game. Huge. They got relegated last season. From there you the go. Oh, fair enough. That so is they're, fair. they're probably going to be up there. Uh, lost to Gosport last week. Um, and we, uh, I can't remember who we got next, actually. I've, I've wrote a preview on it and I can't even remember. <laughs> um, I think no, you, you will see an improvement. The squad is, is talented and yeah. um, they're hungry. And um, I think you will see a, an uptick in results. Well, we, like we said, Middlesbrough tipped for promotion. Sunderland tipped for promotion. Both lost. Their first yeah. two games. So Leeds tip for promotion. Only only huge clubs lose their first two games. <laughs> and I'll go, and I'll go and I'll forget about them. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for coming on, Alex. Cheers. Yeah, thanks yep. for having me. Thank you as always, Xander, as well. That's all right. It's been great. And we'll see you on the next one.